punch. There is a match for every bunch. Snail. All right, class. We have been talking about multiplication and how we can solve our math problems using repeated addition and using arrays. Today we are going to focus on arrays. And remember, we learned that an array is a group of equal rows and equal columns. But let's break down what each one of those is. What is a row and what is a column? Well, for this equation, we're going to talk about rows being what goes side to side. So with your tiles, you've been building arrays. So when you stack them going side to side, you have built a row. That being said, columns are what we think of next. And columns, my friends, go up and down. That means that when you stack them on top of each other, you have built a column. Now, you have a worksheet in front of you, worksheet one for this lesson, and it has a question at the top. It states that Rob and his team keep their hats on a shelf. Now, Rob wants to know how many hats the team has in all. So Rob has built an array to show the hats. How many hats are in each row? And how many hats are in each column? We're also going to want to find out how many rows there are, as well as how many columns there are. And those are our questions that we're going to answer today to solve this problem. Now, to build an array, one thing you have to remember is that each row and each column truly has to be equal. That means every row you have has the same number, and every column you have has the same number. Now, Rob's array displays that. Rob shows us that he has his hats on the shelf. Now, how many rows are there? We can count these together. Let's count them. We have, here's our rows. It tells us, and remember, rows go side to side. So we have one row, two rows, and three rows. So how many rows are there? Three, good job. There are three rows. Now, how many do we have in each row? Let's look. This is our row. Help me count them. One, two, three, four. How many are in each row? Four, great job. There are four in each row. Now, how many columns does Rob's shelf show? Remember, our columns go up and down. So this is one column. This is two columns. Here's our third column. There's three. Last one. There's four columns. How many columns are there? Four. Good job. There are four columns. All right, last thing we need to figure out, friends, is how many are in each column. Remember, our columns go up and down, and we already counted that we have four columns. So, how many are in each column? Here's our column. One, two, three. The column does go up and down. Yes, there are three in that column. Nicely done, there are three three in each column. So friends, that being said, we are learning how to multiply, which we know is just repeating addition problems. So we have four columns and three rows. So if I was going to use my repeated addition, what would that look like? 
Okay, yeah, we would show that we have four, four, and four, because there are four in each right there. Good job. What's another way that we could show that? Okay, yeah, so we could say there's three, 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 three. So remember that would be adding three plus three plus three plus three. Or yes, yes, we can go the other way. Four plus four plus four. Look at this. Repeated addition. We did it right there. Four plus four plus four. Three plus three plus three plus three. That's right. That is how we show the repeated addition. All right. So how many hats are on the shelf? We want to build that into an equation. Yes, we'll use the number sentence just like when we were doing addition and subtraction. So we know that there are three rows. There's the three rows. So we've got our three rows. Oh, and how many were in each row? Oh, okay, here they were. One, two, three, four. We already answered that. Here it is. So we put our multiplication sign. And we put our next number. So three rows times four in each row. Three rows times four in each row build our math problem. That's our number sentence for it. That's the equation that we want to solve. That's how many hats Rob's gonna have on his shelf, okay? So uh, we can solve it. We did it here with our repeated addition. We can do it four, eight, 12, okay? Using our skip counting, good. We can also look at it with our threes. If you prefer to count by threes, yes. Three, six, nine, 12, good job. So three times four is gonna be 12, and that is how many hats Rob has on his shelf. Are there any questions so far? All right, friends, well, I am going to walk around, and what I want you to do is build for me your array to show how many hats Rob has on his shelf. Go ahead and get started, I'm coming around. Very nice job. Good job. All right. Well, it seems like all of you understood that and you were all able to show me both the rows and the columns to build your array. Now, I did have someone ask me if they could flip it and it would be the same thing. Now, yes, if we were to turn it, we could show the same number but in a different array. So nicely done. I'm going to draw it right here for us just so that everyone can see it and get the same answer is the main goal here. So we could show three columns with four in each column. Now that was a great question because if you look, we have now three columns multiplied by four rows. So we get the same numbers, which is going to give us the same answer. So yes, yes, you did. You flipped yours. Good job. He showed me that he could do his array this way and get the same answer. They do mean the same things. Wonderful job. Good, good, good. All right, well, I've got another one now that I want you to try on your own. I'm gonna read you the problem. All right, friends. Mike had a birthday, and for his birthday, he got a bunch of stickers. Now, he's gonna put his stickers into an array. Not this one, but into an array. All right, he's gonna put his stickers into five rows. So remember, rows go across, good. He's got five going in a row. Good. All right. And he's going to put four in each column. He's going to put four in each column. 
All right. He is going to put his stickers into an array. Yes, he's got five in each row, or five rows, and he's got four in each column. So build me your array to show me that I'm gonna build mine too. I'm gonna build mine. I need more too. Just let me know if you need more. stickers for his birthday and he was going to put those stickers into an array. Now how he did his was he put five rows and in each column he put four. All right. Well yours should look something like mine. I've got mine up here. Look I've got my five rows. One, two, three, four, five, and they match my four columns. Remember, columns are going up and down. Columns are what you have going up and down, and the rows are going side to side. All right, so my rows go one, two, three, four, five. We can put it up here. We'll just do it over here. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. And remember there's, oh, I did do it backwards, didn't I? You're right, I did. I, I did, I got tripped up. Two, three, four, two, four, two, three, four. All right. Yes, you're right. He put his stickers into five rows. One, two, three, four, five rows. All right, and he has four, I'm sorry, yeah. One, two, three, four, five rows, and he's got four columns. One, two, three, four. There's his four columns. So how many stickers did Mike put in his array? Now remember, we've got our rows. One, two, three, four, and five. So we've got five. And how many columns do we have? How many columns did he put them in? We'll count them. Here we go. One, two, three, four. So we can use our repeated addition and count by fives. We can do it. Five, 10, 15, 20, good. So that gives us 20. And we can also count by fours. I know, I know, we can't all do, no, it's okay. So we can count by fours because that's faster than counting each one, isn't it? We'd be counting for a while if we sat here going one, two, three, four, five. We don't want to spend all that time counting. Look at this, we built a math problem right here. Four times five, five times four. We get that same answer. Five times four. How many stickers did Mike have? Yes. He did, he had 20 stickers. Good job, friends. He does, he has 20 stickers. All right. How would we write our repeated addition problem for this one? Now remember, we've used repeated addition over here. Four plus four plus four, three plus three plus three plus three plus three. All right, you can tell me. 
Okay, five plus five, good. Plus five, okay. Plus five. And do you still get 20? Well, we know that five plus five is 10. And we know that five plus five is 10. And so 10 plus 10 is 20. You're right, we did it, we did it, we did it. Just like that, we got 20. Mike has 20 stickers. All right. Now you have your worksheet. I'm gonna let you independently practice on a few more. Okay, and then we'll come back together. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it out. You've got your worksheet, it's coming around. Here it comes. All right, friends. We are looking around the classroom. We are looking for arrays that are in our environment right now. Things that you see that are in an array. All right, good. I had one friend share with me her crayon box. Look at her crayon box. She's got rows, she's got columns. Look at that. We already know there's 24 crayons in this box because it tells us, but look, we know that we have three rows. There's three rows in her crayon box. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight crayons in each one of those rows. So the columns here, the, remember the columns are going up and down. There's eight crayons. All right, so there's three rows. Eight crayons in each row. That's one of our equations right there. Our box of crayons. We have three rows times eight, which gave us 24. Her crayons had 24. Yes, yes, you can look at your markers. Your markers do it too. How many rows of markers do you have? Just one. There's just one row. There's one row of markers. All right, so we have one row. And how many? are in that row. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That means there are ten crayons total. That's how many crayons there were. What else do you see? The chairs. The chairs are in a row. Okay. There's two. All right. We've got two rows of chairs. And how many are in each row? Two. You're right. They're in a group of four. There's our four. That's our group of four. There are four chairs right there. What else do you see that is in an array? Now remember, we've got our rows and we've got our columns, and that's what makes our array. What do you see? Oh, the window. You're right, the window is in an array. And how many rows does the window have? Let's count it. One, two, three, Four. There are four slats in that window. And how many columns do you see in that window? We can count. One, two, three. There are three columns. So even though we just have one window with the lattice in there, how many little windows are within that window? We've seen this one before, haven't we? Three times four, 12. There are 12 little windows inside our one big window. What else? Oh, okay. Yeah, I've got an outlet right here. It's a little lower. Okay. And how many rows are there? Okay, there's one row. And how many is in each row? Oh, oh, there's one column. Okay, so there's one column so for this one that's the column okay and there's there's two okay okay or okay so we can do that we can say or so there were two rows yeah and there was one column and we get the same answer don't we yeah we got the same answer either way it's okay we got the same answer we got the same answer is there anything else okay well, you can continue to look as you go outside, when you get home tonight, look in your kitchen. I bet your kitchen is full of arrays. Maybe your floor, if you have a tile floor at home, maybe you have an array across the floor. 
I bet you will start to notice that there are arrays all over. Everywhere you look, you're going to start seeing these arrays. And remember that for it to be an array that has to have equal groups, okay? Equal groups. Equal groups, which means the same number of rows and columns. That means each column and each row has the same. Each one of these rows has four. Each column has three. Four, three. Three rows, four columns. Okay? Keep an eye out for them. You're going to start seeing them everywhere in your environment. All right, friends, it looks like a lot of you are finishing up with your extra practice. What I want you to do is find a partner. Find one of your table mates or someone else that's done, and I want you to pair and share. Remember, when we pair, we're working with how many students? One. You and one more. One student, and you're going to share what you came up with when you finished your worksheet. Look for someone. Though there will be someone. Yes, you're going to share it. All right. And friends, once you have shared with someone, last thing we have today is our exit slips. Okay? I've got two for today. You will come up. You will grab one. You will finish the lesson for today with your exit slip. Okay? Okay, friends. We are going to do our exit slip together. Yeah, we're, we're going to work together to finish our exit slip so that we can be done with our math lesson for today. All right. Yeah, it's just going to be us. Okay. All right. Our exit slip for today. I'll go ahead and read it. No, thank you for wanting to read it. I'm going to go ahead and read it for today, though. All right. Our exit slip for today says, At a baseball game, players line up in two rows to play catch. Each row has eight players in it. Now you can use your manipulatives that are in front of you to build your array to show this. Now remember our friend right here, our friend is reminding us that we can also practice our skip counting. We can practice our skip counting to answer this. Okay, so the first thing our question tells us, we're gonna look at it, we're gonna underline the important words, okay? It says, at a baseball game. Is that important? Do we need to underline anything there? Okay, so we'll keep going. At a baseball game, players line up in two rows. How many rows are there? There's two. There's two. I'm going to go ahead and start drawing our picture for it. So we know we've got two rows. So we've got one row and we've got two rows. Yeah, you underlined it. Go ahead. That's what we need to do. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Each row has eight players good job there are eight players in each row okay so how many players are playing catch okay let's finish building our array you build yours i'm going to build mine because we know there's how many rows there's two and how many players in each row god there's eight players in each row i've got my two rows started now i've got to get I've got to get to eight. I've got to make sure I've got all eight players in each row. There's one. Do you want a pair and show? Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, friends. I have my array built. I bet you have your array built. I can see it. Yeah. Okay, so at the baseball game, the players lined up into two rows. Okay? And each row had eight players. Were you able to build an equal group array? You got your equal groups? You got them? Okay, well, remember we started with our two rows. 
we had our two rows, okay? And we had to make sure that each row had eight players in it. These two are gonna play catch, and these two are gonna play catch, and these two, and these two, and they're equal. Mine are equal. I see, yours are equal, yes. Yeah, you have equal ones too, good. Okay, equal rows make our array. And we've got our two rows and our eight columns. So how many players are playing catch? Now, we, it gives us some answers here. It gives us some options. It says eight, yep, there are eight players. Are there 10 players? Are there 16 players? Or are there 18 players? Now remember, she's reminding us that we can practice our skip counting to answer this. Is it easier to skip count by eight? Or is it easier to skip count by two? Okay, let's try twos. I agree, because they're, they're two playing catch, right? That's why they lined up this way. So all together, we're gonna skip count by twos. Ready? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Good job counting by twos. Good job counting by twos, friends. All right, so we used our skip counting. We used our skip counting to find out how many players there were. Now, is our number one of the answers that's given? Let's look at them again. We've got eight, 10, 16, or 18. There's our number, it's right there, it's 16. All right, so on your paper now, you have your array drawn, good. You have circled your right answer, and we have finished practicing our skip counting by twos. I know. You think you can? Okay, she wants to practice skip counting by eights. All right, so she's gonna say, okay. Eight, good. 16, good. <laughs> That's right, because two times eight equals 16. But the opposite is true. Also, you're right. Eight times two equals 16. We can find it both ways. Well, good job, skip counting, guys. Go ahead and get your exit slips turned in. Uh-huh. Yeah, go ahead and get ready.